What's going on guys? It is Sneed from Sneed Mobile Tech. I'd like to wish you all a good day and I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. In today's episode of the Sneed Mobile Tech YouTube channel, I've got a complete summary and recap of Spectrum Auction 102 from the FCC. Let's go ahead and cover everything that happened in terms of winning bids, total money spent, and analysis and conclusion of everything we can draw from these auctions. To get things started in terms of total spending, uh, there was over $2 billion of revenue generated from these Spectrum auctions. Uh, it was much bigger than what we saw in January's 28 gigahertz auction. I think that one only generated about $700 million. This one about three times more. Uh, clearly more people invested into this Spectrum at this time. Just some basic terminology to get out of the way first. 24 gigahertz Spectrum auction, this type of spectrum is millimeter wave. Technically, by definition, it is the type of spectrum that offers great capacity, great speeds, you know, very low latency. There's a reason why carriers want this type of spectrum. Uh, this is what they're going to use to bolster their 5G networks. Uh, in total, there was 2,900 licenses, I think 2,909 to be exact, uh, in 416 markets. I'm going to be referring to PEAs as markets just to give you guys an idea of area segments across the US. Each license affords 100 megahertz of airwaves for network usage and uh, seven quantity 100 megahertz blocks per market to give you an idea of how concentrated these types of licenses are. So 24 gigahertz spectrum is by definition millimeter wave. That's how it gets qualified. Uh, this is the type of spectrum that is really, really fast, has a lot of capacity, a lot of throughput, Excellent latency uh, opportunity there. Um, 2,909 licenses in total were auctioned in 416 different markets. Each license affords 100 megahertz of airwaves for network usage. Seven quantity of these 100 megahertz blocks per market. So to give you an idea of concentration there of spectrum. These licenses are much more concentrated than the 4G and LTE licenses that have been used by the FCC and the current wireless providers. I think the FCC understands the need for speed is paramount here, so that's why it is this way. And national wireless carriers were the hogs in this particular auction, that's the expectation, focus on mobility, but we did get a couple of home ISPs involved and US Cellular got involved on a much smaller scale. So let's get started with Verizon. Verizon spent $506 million at this auction, not very notable, um, a lot less than all the other carriers that were involved, and I'll get to the reason as to why this was the case. AT&T and T-Mobile on the other side were huge participants in this auction. They spent over $1.8 billion. They obtained a lot of licenses for this Spectrum. A quick rundown of what AT&T did in the Spectrum auction. They spent $982 million. They were able to acquire 831 licenses in 383 markets. Huge market share, huge section of purchases from them. Uh, this is quite expansive if you look at you know the 383 markets this should be very good for their national deployment of 5g in terms of what t-mobile did t-mobile came in at an 803 million dollar expenditure 1346 licenses in 400 available national markets so clearly a big emphasis by at&t and t-mobile to get coverage nationwide for their 5g networks in terms of national coverage with these market allocations, AT&T should have about 92% of the national space covered with this type of spectrum. And I think T-Mobile came in at about 96% coverage. Very, very high. They did a really good job of making sure that they get enough spectrum across the U.S. Next up, we have U.S. Cellular, who spent about $126 million, Very, very low. 282 licenses acquired in 102 markets. Clearly not a big player, not a big thing in terms of making a wave there, uh, but they did make some purchases. Last but not least to mention is Sprint, or maybe I should say the least. Sprint actually did something interesting, and they purchased nothing. They were unsuccessful in bidding. Uh, they made zero purchases, and that's why I kind of saved them for last. The thing that's notable about Sprint is the fact that they actually didn't bid under their business name of Sprint and they bid under ATI sub LLC and 
they were unsuccessful in their bids. I don't know why it was the case. I get why they didn't buy Spectrum because of their money situation and being all in on the merger. But I don't know why they even entered the bids under this name or what the, the purpose was for that. But that's what happened. To kind of put a bow on everything, uh, Starry, which is a home ISP, spent $48 million on 104 licenses in 51 markets. Windstream came in with $20 million spent on 116 licenses in 40 different markets. I think what they're doing with this is going to be fixed 5G, not mobility. Uh, their focus is going to be providing gigabit speed home internet. And uh, that's kind of what they're doing with their Spectrum holdings. Why did Verizon only spend $506 million at the Spectrum auction when... You know, AT&T and T-Mobile clearly went big. And I think what this boils down to is the fact that Verizon has already spent 500 plus million dollars in a previous auction in January. At auction 101 for the 28 gigahertz spectrum. So in that particular auction, uh, Verizon was able to get these two blocks of 424, or excuse me, 425 megahertz of spectrum. Very concentrated. Uh, that was in January at auction 101. They covered half of the U.S. in terms of market. Uh, they were able to obtain 1,066 uh, licenses at that auction. Uh, there were only 1,536 total, so they took a huge chunk of that. And uh, they're going to have 863 markets covered of the 1,536 available in that spectrum. T-Mobile also was identified as making purchases in Auction 101, but they only spent $39 million, and it was for 865 licenses in 864 markets so while they did make some purchases clearly they went big on you know the 24 gigahertz variety of the spectrum auctions so that's kind of the itemized breakdown of all the bids and all the purchases made from these auctions especially the most recent one 102 uh, what i think i want to do is kind of just summarize everything quickly verizon less of a player in this auction but they were very balanced they pretty much matched what they did in January at Spectrum Auction 101 in getting 28 gigahertz. They kind of matched it with what they did in Spectrum Auction 102 with the 24 gigahertz. Very, very balanced. Lots of um, equilibrium to what they're going to be doing with their build out. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top, but all carriers are positioned to deploy a very competitive 5G marketplace, and the performance should be pretty good. These are really, really fast. Uh, spectrum frequencies obviously it's easy to go ahead and say well verizon is going to offer the best 5g network they have the track record and they do have a reputation for building out an amazing network to support their customers but again at&t can't be slept on they've got great nationwide coverage and t-mobile has shown a reputation for accelerated builds of networks what they've done with lte in the last couple of years is truly phenomenal and i wouldn't you know count them out for building out a great 5G network. I really do think that Neville Ray has the know-how, possibly has the resources to potentially get to or pass uh, the big two. Go ahead and drop me a line in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything. You guys can tell me you know, who you think is gonna be a winner in this, who do you think is gonna offer the best network. And uh, of course, you know, if you disagree with what I've said or you wanna you know, bring something up that maybe is a big part that I've missed, Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below anything that you guys want to talk about. Comment section, always welcome. Pretty much wraps up the video. If you could, please go ahead and rate the video either a like or a dislike. Doesn't matter to me. Show your level of engagement. Uh, also, if you would like to support the channel, go ahead and share the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And also, make sure you're set to be notified uh, so that you get notifications for all the uploaded videos. As soon as they come out, you'll be the first to know. And if you're also interested in becoming more engaged with SMT, we've got the Discord server, the Discord community, SMT Nation. I'll put a link in the description box below. And also, if you'd like to support Sneed Mobile Tech production, you guys can check out the uh, SMT on Patreon. I'll put a link in the description box below for that as well. Get exclusive content, uh, get some unique perks that you know only the SMT Patreon side gets. And if all of that is a little bit too much or you're not really looking to go that far into the community, no problem. If you'd like to make a smaller occasional donation to SMT and productivity here on the YouTube channel, there is a link in the description box below for a PayPal donation. Thank you for all considerations and getting engaged with the community. So let's leave it at that. I want to thank you guys again for taking the time to watch the video and supporting Steam Mobile Tech on YouTube, on Patreon, or the Discord. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, all the viewers and subscribers on the YouTube channel. I think I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. 
This is Sneed from Steam Mobile Tech, and I will see you guys on the next video.